Hey folks, Tristan from Huge Menace here, back with some more ND Asset Library shenanigans. This time, I'm going to go over more advanced use cases for operators such as Path Smooth and Distribute while showing off a sneaky new operator we published in V2 that we haven't spoken about yet. So let's get stuck into it. We'll start with the Path Smooth operator. This operator is designed to procedurally smooth out an edge path like the one we have here. This avoids the need for vertex bevels or annoying to wrangle curves. I'll drop the path smooth operator onto this path, then adjust the corner segments and radius to get a smooth sweeping path. Now on its own, that may be all you want, but sometimes we do like a bit more control. What happens if we want to control the radius of each corner independently? As it currently stands, changing the radius affects all corners uniformly. But never fear, we've already considered the use case and built in various mechanisms to give you more control where needed. Prepare to have your mind blown. If we take a look at these ominous looking factor inputs, you'll see there's one for the corner segments and one for the corner radius. Dragging the radius factor back and forth shows it changing the total radius applied to the path's corners. But you're probably wondering how or why this is useful given that changing the factor value in our modifier affects every point uniformly. And you'd be right if it weren't for this magical little toggle next to the input value which lets us switch from a single value to an attribute. If we click on it though, it appears to break our setup. And that's because there isn't an attribute blender can read right now, we need to supply one. Let's do that using a vertex group. I'll head over to the data properties and create a new vertex group. The name doesn't matter, but for simplicity, let's call it corner radius factor. Then back at the modifier, let's select it as our data source. Okay, we're still not seeing anything because the vertex group by default has no vertices assigned to it. To assign vertices to the group, go back to the data properties and switch to edit mode. I'll then select all the vertices, set the weight to 1, and assign them to the group. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. Our smooth corners are back. Now let's get tricky. If you notice, the weight parameter here is a factor slider that ranges from 0 to 1. So, with just one corner vertex selected, let's set the weight to 0 0.5 and then assign that to the selected vertex. And bada bing, bada boom, you've now got one corner with a smaller radius than the other. Now, if you're like us, you've probably got two simultaneous thoughts going through your head right now. The first, this is amazingly powerful, and the second, damn, having to manually change the weight one step at a time seems incredibly tedious. But once again, we've got you. Let's jump back into edit mode and select a vertex. We can then run a special little operator hanging out in the data menu called Vertex Group Editor. This operator reads all vertex groups on your mesh and lets you interactively set the weights of the selected vertices, either directly or randomly. For instance, if I hit the S key to set the weight directly, I can move my mouse left and right or scroll up and down to adjust the weight, and therefore the radius, in real time. Damn, that's some quantum sh right there, man. Let's quickly recap all of this, but using the new pipe operator. I'll start with the same base path, but reset it back to its default state. I'll then add the path smooth operator and provide a default number of segments and a radius. I'll then add the pipe operator to it, adjust the diameter, set the fitting type, and smooth shade it. Cool, now I want to control the factor for each corner, so let's create a vertex group to hold that information. I'll then assign that vertex group to the corner radius factor input on the path smooth operator. Then in edit mode, we'll use the vertex group editor operator to adjust each corner's factor to achieve the overall shape we want for this pipe. And there you go, a fully procedural pipe using a basic edge path. If you're wondering, the corner radius factor isn't the only input you can control via attributes. Any input you see with the spreadsheet icon next to it can be driven in this way. Just keep in mind though, that vertex groups only hold weight information in a zero to one range. 
but they're best used for inputs that expect those values, which in terms of ND assets will be any input ending with the word factor. Other inputs that accept values outside of the 0 to 1 range are best fed data from attributes stored as floats on the vertex domain. This can be set up in the attributes section under the data properties panel or via another geometry nodes network present earlier in the modifier stack. Okay, let's take a look at a slightly different example using another operator, distribute. For this, I'll use a simple plane with four vertices. I'll then drag the distribute operator onto it. Next, let's create a screw model to distribute. Then pick it from the distribute modifier and do a bit of cleanup. Now usually when you look at a real world object with screws holding some part of it together, they don't always line up perfectly like they do here, it seems unnatural. Using our newfound powers, let's sort this out. As you can see, the distribute operator has a rotation factor input. This input calculates the total rotation applied via the rotation input settings in the advanced section. So let's create a vertex group called rotation factor and use that as the data source for the rotation factor input. Then in edit mode, using the vertex group editor, we can slightly adjust the weight of each vertex, adding a bit of z-axis rotation, making them look more natural. Now, unlike the pipe corner radius example, this is a situation where randomness would be helpful. Instead of selecting each vertex individually and setting its weight by hand, let's select all of the vertices we want to affect and then use the randomize weights function of the vertex group operator. Each time you hit the R key, a new random seed is generated. You can hit this as many times as you want to find a configuration that works for you. Now let's take a look at another use case. I'll increase the size of this plane and add a bunch of additional loop cuts, increasing the number of instance spawn points. I'll then randomize all the weights to give each screw some rotation. Next, let's imagine we didn't want any screws instance right in the center here. To facilitate that, let's change our distribute spawn condition to threshold. This exposes a couple of new inputs, weighting and spawn threshold. How this works is that as long as the weight of any given vertex is higher than or equal to the spawn threshold, it will appear. So if I drag the global weight value down below 0.5, all of the screws disappear. But we don't want them all to disappear, just the ones in the center. So let's use our trusty old vertex group. I'll create a new group called spawn weighting and assign it to the weighting input. All our screws disappear as expected since nothing is assigned to the vertex group yet. To quickly get it sorted out, let's select all the vertices and run the vertex group editor. Now be careful, we have two vertex groups to deal with. As you can see, we're starting off with the rotation factor group, which is not what we want to edit. So I'll scroll to find the spawn weighting group. I'll then hit S to set the weight, which always defaults to 1, and commit the operation. This brings all of our screws back. Then let's select the middle group and set their weighting to anything below 0.5. And there you have it, a neat little distribution of screws with randomized rotations and a center area carved out. All done, non-destructively based on our original input grid. Well, that's about it for now. We'll be publishing more videos soon, covering other operators in depth, as well as tutorials using these new assets in combination with ND's core set of operators. Have fun. See ya.